Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another video by yours truly. I'm gonna go ahead and let y'all know this is the second time I had to record this video. You want to know why? Because the goddamn audio went out for no reason at all. But we're going to talk about it again because you know what? Practice makes perfect. So I wanted to talk to you guys about the underlying issue I've come to notice. It's an inherent flaw uh, in gotcha games, and that is the banner system. When you pull on these characters as a veteran player and you've been a frequent spender and a frequent player as the game's debut launch all the way in today, it's going on two years for Honkai Star Rail, you are inevitably going to come across the realization that you have all the four star characters in their constellations or copies maxed out. They're built up, right? So if there are three promotional characters, which we've come to see in the 2.7 live stream for Sunday, the most valuable and prized possession character right now in the past 30 patches, you're not excited about his banner because you see the four stars and you're like, I already have those E6. There's literally no incentive for me to pull on this banner except Sunday himself. And this is somewhat of a punishment to a veteran player because it's just like, why am I being punished for owning all of these characters? It just, it's kind of weird. And I remember there was an argument made by a chatter during the stream, or I think he might've commented on my YouTube channel. Regardless, he said, well, Smack, I prefer to have the characters maxed out. That way I can get my one pool currency. And then that's when it dawned on me. This guy has been getting treated like shit in this space for so long that he thinks that one pool is a good thing. It's a bad thing that you only get one pool back after doing 10 pulls when we take into consideration the premium price point of how much these banners cost. We're talking $100 per 50 to 55 wishes. Correct me there. I think it's somewhere between there. So getting one pullback after you already have the four-star characters maxed out is inexcusable, guys. There needs to be more compensation for already having characters developed. So I want to talk about the solutions here after presenting you this very obvious problem. One solution we can do here is there's no excuse for Hoyo to not have an increase in four-star volume. Four-star volume would allow us to have more newer four-stars upon these new premium-priced banners. And that's gonna help with the excitement because after all, what's the most exciting thing in a gacha game? Pulling on the characters. That's where all the hype, that's where all the excitement and happiness occurs. Also the heartbreaks when you realize you lost that 50-50. <laughs> so what I propose here is that they increase the volume of the four-star characters. Now you might be asking yourself, Mac, I don't want four-star characters because their value is always gonna be inferior to a five-star character. But here's the thing. That's a problem with development on the company. Your only incentive to play four-star characters should not just be because I enjoy them and I like how their art style looks. It should also be, well, honestly, they're almost just as good as the five-star characters. Wuthering Waves has done an exceptional job with its four-star characters. Sanwa, Yang Yang, Don Jean, um, the, the new girl, the little leprechaun girl that came out in recent times. All of these characters are dead ass meta. They're just as good as the five star characters so far, right? We'll see what happens as time progresses. But what I'm trying to tell you here is that there should be an increase in value for the four star characters an increase in volume. That way, when we pull pull on these banners going forward, we're more excited. We're like, oh, my God, I got that four star character. I might have lost the 50 50, but at least I got a new four star. Veteran players right now, guys, we're pulling on these banners. And we're just like, God, when's my five star coming home, man? Because I ain't got shit else to be pulling on this banner for no other incentive. And it's bad. It's inherently flawed. And I don't know how on God's green earth it's lasted as long as it has. And you know why? People do not speak up in this community on underlying problems. We can't improve anything if you don't voice your concerns. And you are the reason these games survive. You're, re you're the reason they're alive. And if you don't speak up, then no change is going to occur. Now, of course, we have to take into consideration change that is within the scopes of what they deem fair, right? Which means we got to sprinkle a little bit of dirt on that improvement. You can't sprinkle gold on it, right? You can't say, I need another five star. You got to gotta stay realistic here, boys. All right, this is a gotcha company. <laughs> now, the other thing I wanted to talk to you about is solution number two. Solution number two is you still get your one-tenth resource back. But in addition to that, we get the most uh scarcity the, the the resource in the game that has the most scarcity we get that in addition to our one pullback so oh you already got an e6 uh whatever the fuck four star ting yun you already got an e6 ting yun well you get one pullback with, that you always get and you get 20 purple books this helps you set up for the future and develop your characters the moment they come out and increase them all the way to 80 without being like i'm broke 
right? And, and that is the worst possible way of improvement, by the way. Asking for 20 books on top of a one pool, that's the worst way. The best way is increase the volume of the four star characters. Or the third solution is allow us to choose between other four star characters. Stop releasing just three with the five star release three and do the idea that you've already implemented into your game for the five star characters remember the banner where face Shao came out it was face Shao, robin kafka and black swan that was a fucking quadruple entendre no i'm just kidding kendrick lamar reference it was a literal quadruple scenario where you had so many characters to choose from and you that that is a beautiful thing that's somebody who's trying to go for dot comps who's trying to go for follow-up comps more more options better do that with the four stars three star because if i see three four stars down there and i go oh i already have those maxed out guess what i can now look at the other three that are on reserve and say let me let me flop him in there because i actually don't have him maxed out it's a little bit of an improvement that's not going to just take a shit in their lawn and diminish the income that they are making off of these banners which is an absurd amount of income I don't think I'm being unreasonable here by bringing this up, and I'm sure many different veteran players are also going to be in agreement with this, like, diminish in excitement. Again, this is the most imperative factor in a gacha game, pulling on the banners. So it's important that we preserve the excitement by making sure we feel rewarded for pulling on these banners. If the five stars is the only reason, then we've kind of entered a, a season of the gacha game where it's like, maybe we should just leave because I don't want to just pull on a gotcha character and not be rewarded for it. I, I assure you, I don't have the statistics here, but there's a lot of people who are veteran players who get to that point, who get to that crossroad and they go, yeah, I think it's just time for me to move on, right? So that's a bad thing for the company that's less money and their uh, popularity of their game is gonna go downhill as well. At the end of the day, this is all up for discussion. I would love to hear your thoughts on the matter. So please comment down below and share them. Let me know what you think. Now that I've wrapped up with everything I wanted to talk about, I just want to let you guys know a little behind the scenes like reveal here. Holy spoilers. Yeah, no, I actually have my best friend of all time right next to me. You guys don't see it because he actually wanted to watch some behind the scenes process of what it's like for me to create this video. In fact, he helped organize my thoughts on this very video you're watching right now. We were trying to analyze what we could do solution wise to remedy the situation of that diminishing return as a veteran player. But I'd like to introduce him. Tyree, go ahead and pull up on in here, brother. Uh, bro, by the way, bro is another like a uh, specimen. He's six, six, right? Or six, seven. Yeah, he's six, six guys. All right. So I've always been surrounded by incredibly tall people. But T, honestly, I just want you to know is there anything you wanted to ask me about that process? Yeah, so um, to be honest, I think, and this is knowing that you drop, not necessarily bombshells or anything, but you know, this is content. What is the process after you post your content? So not necessarily the process, but whenever you wrap this up, what do you do to keep your mind from peeking back on Looking at the, looking at your content, looking at the stuff that you've done, looking at speak, the, yeah, speak higher. Uh, looking at the stuff that you've done, looking at all the, um, what the feedback, you know, uh, what would it be? Well, now we would say feed forward. So I would say the feed forward regarding, you know, negative, positive outlooks, some of the ideas that get, you know, uh, branched off of the ideas whenever you upload your media. And then like, do you think of ever, creating response content like and not you know uh, rebuttal or not like back and forth but response as far as like i want to be transparent and vulnerable with you guys i didn't think of that or that's you know insensitive or that was crazy of me or like ignorant of me to not know you know of such matter such media such subject i feel like uh in my community it will be able to tell you about that as well if, I, if you want me to be completely honest with you, I feel like um, that's something I could work on. But here's the thing. Not all feedback is good feedback, if you know what I mean. But it, it, this is the thing. The way I like decipher it is often at times, if, you're, if, if, if it's an intelligent individual who's had a good time to think about it, I would like to say that the comment that they leave is going to be devoid of any vitriol feelings. Uh, it's going to be devoid of any bitterness, and it's usually going to just contain good substance to it that allows me to bounce back. You know what I mean? Which I feel like, to be completely honest with you, in this space, we don't get those enough. 
but I actually praise my community. There's a lot of intelligent people that are going to provide feedback on this situation of angles we didn't consider. But if I'm being honest with you, the often at times where I have some humility and I go, damn, you know what? You're right. I didn't know that. It's when I'm live streaming because what happens is I have that feedback in real time where I'm like, well, how do, how do you know that? And then they'll tell me and then I'm like, oh, okay. It happens to me all the time, actually. <laughs> but, and I guess that's the value of live streaming. You're actually able to get like real feedback and you're, ha you're able to have a back and forth. Whereas with the camera, it's just a, I shoot my message and then I just only look at the feedback and there's no way for me to converse back and forth. You know what I mean? Right, right, and, and here's the other thing too. It's, it's viewed upon, which is unfortunate. It's viewed upon in this space as a negative to hold a conversation in your own comment section. You, you're, you're viewed as unprofessional and that shouldn't be the way, right? That should, that, that should be a terrible thing. But here's the problem T. A lot of the times you're arguing with a fool who came into your video with a preconceived ideology that they don't want to let go of. And it's like, if you just continue to try to have a civil conversation with them, often at times it just goes to a rabbit hole of them just trying to shove their fucking perspective. You know what I mean? So uh, I feel like that's the best way to answer that. But in terms of once I finish the video, usually I just, I wait on the responses to see how it's received. And then I'll analyze it and obsessively go over many points I could have probably made better. But often at times, I think it's one of those where perfection is a negative. It's like, okay, bro, at the end of the day, let it go. It's out there now and you learn from that and you move forward because otherwise you'll just get in your head about it and you end up not even uploading the video. Does that make sense? Yeah, de definitely, definitely appreciate it. Yeah, appreciate uh, it's funny because he's trying to get into, uh, I think he's trying to get into the financing uh, genre and I was talking with him about uh, pretty much the infrastructure of growing as a creator and what you can do as a creator to bring value and garner a community. And it ultimately all goes down to finding problems that exist in the community, uh, identifying them, and then pre presenting the solutions in a way that's not really arrogant, but more so elegant, such as I'm not coming at you like I'm a know-it-all, but this is based off of research I've already done, uh, experience and wisdom that I've gone through in my life, so on and so forth. Uh, and there's a lot, that's, that's a rabbit hole to go down, but I just wanted to like let you guys peel back the curtain a bit. My best friends in town from San Diego, motherfucker works at Apple, bro. He's building the shit that we, we use all the time. Bro's literally working on the motherboard. <laughs> nah, but uh, peace, love, and happiness. We're gonna have some whiskey after this, man. You guys take care and I'll see you tomorrow.